So going into the very big details of atmosphere because it is very important because the air is covering all around the earth then atmosphere has quite a many layers. Atmosphere layers and those layers the first one is troposphere is only 10 kilometer from that of the ground and it is that place where we can found the clouds. The next part is the stratosphere which is 50 kilometers from the ground. The troposphere is only 10 kilometer from that of the ground. Okay, from the ground level it is only at 10 kilometers and it is that region where you can find the clouds or you can find the moisture, moisture because moisture only forms the clouds so you can find the clouds and the moisture. The stratosphere is 50 kilometers from the ground. The next layer that we are going to understand is mesosphere, mesosphere and it is 85 kilometers from ground. It is that place where the meteoroids get burnt. The meteoroids get burnt. The next one is thermosphere and it is 500 kilometers to 1000 kilometers from ground and it is 5000 kilometer to 1000 kilometer in ground and the last one is exosphere this layer is still under the studies of the scientist because many people consider that thermosphere is the final but few scientists argue that exosphere is also present. So let us make a small recapitulation. What are the layers of atmosphere? First one is troposphere. It is 10 kilometers from ground. It is that place where moisture and clouds can be obtained. Then we have stratosphere which is 50 kilometers from ground and it is that place where the ozone layer is found. The ozone layer is found. The next is mesosphere. It is 85 kilometers from ground and it is that place where the meteoroids get totally burnt. And the last one is thermosphere which is 500 kilometer to 1000 kilometer from ground and it is that place which is considered to be the outermost covering of the earth. But some scientists argue that there is a presence of exosphere which is above the troposphere but it is still under great doubt because it is not yet proved. So these are all about the resources of our nature. The resources mainly are the lithosphere, the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. These are some of the layers and the interaction of lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere constitutes the biosphere that is required for our living. Let us go to the next topic that is air. So air is a very very important aspect of our natural resource. Why so? Because air is that element due to which it is considered that the earth on which we are living is sustainable. That is the earth's condition is livable for various organisms. Say Mars and Venus. These two planets are also present. Then why not the life is present on these two planets? Because if I say about life, it is not present. But in case of earth, life is there. Why so? Because Mars and Venus, the atmosphere contains 90 to 95 percent of only carbon dioxide. 90 to 95 percent of carbon dioxide. And 90 to 95 percent of carbon dioxide, wherever will be present, it will not be applicable for a proper life. Never. No. But say for our Earth, if I go for the constitution of the air that you have already learned in chapter 2, then nitrogen is present in the highest amount, followed by oxygen, followed by carbon dioxide and then water vapor. So, life on earth, that is why is possible. So, these two planets, irrespective of having many features similar to that of Earth, cannot sustain living organism because of the presence of 90 to 95 percent of carbon dioxide in the air. So, in a nutshell, if I say that the composition of the air in the atmosphere is very, very imperative for the Earth organisms 
to be leaving, then I will be 100% right. Say for example, if I go into a bit details of it, where are the two places where you can see there is consumption of oxygen and production of carbon dioxide? There are majorly two processes where there is consumption of oxygen and evolution of carbon dioxide. Glucose breaking down and combustion. So as you have already learnt in your previous classes that in digestion we break down the complex substances into a simpler one. So whenever there is breaking down of glucose there is utilization of oxygen and carbon dioxide is evolved. You can see the chemical reaction. When glucose reacts with oxygen, it gets broken down into carbon dioxide and water. And that is what is called aerobic respiration. Say, this is the chemical reaction. When glucose reacts with oxygen, it gives down carbon dioxide, water plus heat. I have not made balancing, it is just a skeletal reaction that glucose reacting with oxygen breaking down into carbon dioxide and water and heat. So as you can see here there is utilization of oxygen and there is release of carbon dioxide. Similarly in case of combustion which is a good terminology for that of burning there is utilization of oxygen and carbon dioxide is released. Why so? Because combustion occurs only when there is a presence of oxygen. Say burning of paper, burning of wood or burning of cotton clothes. It will burn only and only when there is oxygen present and after burning it will definitely give out carbon dioxide. So these are the two processes where we have seen there is evolution of carbon dioxide. But similarly, there are again two processes where there is utilization of carbon dioxide maintaining the vicious cycle. To maintain this vicious cycle of balance of carbon dioxide, there are again two processes where carbon dioxide is being utilized. Number one is photosynthesis. Number one is photosynthesis. And number two is Photosynthesis is self-explanatory. I am not going into the detail of it. It is that process by virtue of which plants make food in presence of sunlight with the help of the pigment present in the leaf that is chlorophyll. You have all learned this. You have memorized this statement from the time you have started learning. So here as you can see there is utilization of carbon dioxide and there is evolution of oxygen. Say so I am just reversing this reaction. I am just reversing this arrow. So, uh, you can see that carbon dioxide and water reacts together to form glucose and oxygen. So, here there is oxygen evolving and carbon dioxide being used. I am just reversing the reaction. This was aerobic, different aspect. I am just re reversing this reaction. Carbon dioxide and water reacts together to form glucose and oxygen. And that is the process of photosynthesis. That is the process of photosynthesis. And that is chemical reaction. And carbonate to shell means what? Diversity chapter when I was teaching you, you might have heard about the calcium carbonate shells present on the body of the mollusk. You have remember? You have also heard that there is exoskeleton present on outside of the arthropods. So, where this shell of mollusk is getting developed? They are in water, that is where from they are getting these shells. The carbonate ion present, that is CO3, 2 minus carbonate ion present is being used to make up the shells of the marine mollusk or marine animals. That is, this carbonate ion is being used to make up the shell of the marine animal. So again, do you not finding utilization of carbon dioxide? Definitely yes. The carbon dioxide is being used to make the shells of the organism and finally the organism is developing an outer protective covering. So where we have found two places there is utilization of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. We have also found the antagonistic utilization of carbon dioxide and giving out of oxygen. And this is how the very balance of carbon dioxide is maintained in our atmosphere. Now, 
after we have completed the various layers of atmosphere, we shall go into a bit details of what is the role or what is the importance of atmosphere in our life. Say, if I start this discussion with the statement or with an interrogation, that what would happen if there is no atmosphere? Yes, these questions shall jiggle our mind and shall make us perplexed. We shall not be able to answer until we are not able to understand the very importance of what atmosphere plays in our day-to-day -day life. Say, this is the earth and that is sun. The solar energy is entering into the earth. Now, above earth, I have made one layer and that layer is the layer of atmosphere. The atmosphere is allowing the solar energy to pass through it as well as releasing the unused energy that has been re-radiated back from the earth. Well, with this, can we conclude the importance of atmosphere? Not really. The atmosphere's most important role is it maintains the average temperature of earth. Not only it maintains the average temperature of a day or week or month, it maintains the average temperature of the earth throughout years and years and years. From the time it has been predicted that earth's formation was done, till that time this average temperature is being maintained by that of atmosphere. Now a question may come how or now a question may also come in what way? See in the time of day when the temperature of the earth is high this very atmosphere helps to cool down the temperature. See during night when the temperature is quite low this atmosphere again warms up. See how this re-radiated solar energy from that of the earth surface is being trapped in the layer of the atmosphere and this trapped solar energy thereby helps in facilitating in warming the atmospheric temperature of the earth surface as simple as that means to maintain the average temperature of say 25 degrees celsius or say 30 degrees celsius adequate or selected amount of solar energy is being allowed to come in and similarly an amount of energy is being trapped in order to regain that original temperature provided the earth's temperature is getting lower down. So it cools during the day and warms during the night. What? The temperature and how? By the influence of atmosphere. Last point is Though the distance of sun from earth's surface is similar to that of moon's surface, then why not life found on moon? Because the average temperature there is minus 190 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius, which is not at all feasible for life. Life cannot survive. Why so? Because there is no atmosphere. There is no atmosphere on the moon and that is the sole reason that the moon's surface though having same distance from that of sun as it was having in case of earth, it cannot sustain life. Let us go into one experiment. Say there are three beakers. This beaker is A, this beaker is B and this beaker is C. In this beaker we have water. What you have is water. In this beaker, you have sand or cis soil. And in this beaker, you have one thermometer. We have one thermometer. This is open. This is also open. And this is closed. And it has been kept in sun for three hours. After three hours, what do you expect? about the temperature of water, of the sand or soil or the thermometer's rating because here you have air. The observation is this temperature is highest, highest temperature among A and B. Means among these two, it has the highest temperature. 
if it is having 25 degree celsius it will have 35 degree or say uh, 37 degree celsius means this temperature is higher than this temperature okay but what about c the c's temperature will be the highest among b and c the temperature of the beaker C will be highest among this one and this one. So definitely highest than this also because this was already the lowest one. Why so? This is because of greenhouse effect. Just compare, we will study this effect later on. Just compare this beaker to that of atmosphere. Okay, so this is one atmospheric layer, this is one atmospheric layer and this is one atmospheric layer covering the earth's surface. So this water, this sand and this air has been enclosed by atmosphere. Now this land is getting heated up fast than that of water but the air is getting heated up fastest than that of water and land. This is because of this presence of the atmosphere around our earth surface that the ambient temperature for a living organism to survive is maintained around us. I think I am clear. These atmospheric layer present around the earth's surface is that is why imperative for our survival because it is maintaining the average temperature of say air say water and that of the land land since getting off heated faster than that of water and air there is now the second concept we are going to enter that is wind but before entering into that you should be very clear about the importance of atmosphere that it maintains the average temperature it gets cooled it lets the environment get cool lets the environmental temperature gets cooled when it is during the day while it gets warmed up when it is during the night for facilitating the survival of every living organism around us okay so this is all about the importance of atmosphere let me ask you a bewildering question now. What makes you feel comfortable in the evening of a hot summer day while you are enjoying the thrashing waves at the Puri beach? My second question is, what makes the clothes flapper when it is being kept in the rooftop for drying 